Welcome back to Rising. We're getting a special treat this morning with Penn and Teller Foolish champ Brian Saint returning to our show. Brian, uh, hey, we want to hear all about your appearance tonight, but first, is there anything that you'd like to show us? Yes, let's do it. Let's do it. So the first right. time I was on Fool Us, I did a rope trick, uh, but I used a phone charger for it. So this morning, I'm going to do a phone charger trick, but use a rope. Okay. Well, it's really, this is just the original trick. So uh, this is actually something we're going to teach people how to do this. So okay. this is kind of a cool thing. So hold your left hand out, palm okay. up. I'm just going to put this here. Put the ends here, close tight, close tight, and turn your hand over like this. We keep the ends away from this part of the rope. So this is the first part. Okay. You should take just this part, and with you holding the ends, it's impossible to make a knot in the rope. You see, this actually, this yeah. is a knot in, this is actually a knot. Right. And you're still holding on, it's impossible to undo the knot. So that's just, that's the first part. Now the weird thing is, again, it's impossible because you're holding the ends. Don't let go, just loosen your grips. I'm gonna pull this through, pull this through, you see? Because this actually, um, there is no ends to this. Now as I said, I'm gonna teach you how to do this. I'm gonna teach everyone how to do this. First thing you have to do is you have to go online and buy one of these. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm not joking. This yeah. is called a rope loop. It's just a, a rope made into a circle. You need a small piece that matches. When you hold the two ends together like this, mm -hmm. that's what I was doing when we came back from commercial. Notice I didn't shake your hand when we came back right. on. I was standing like this in a very awkward position. So I'm actually holding the two together. Now when you buy these two items online, and I say this for any parent that wants to buy this for their children, when you buy these two items online, please make sure they are the same color. <laughs> yeah, important. But there's one other way you can make it look like a real rope. If you hold your hand like this, palm up, we're gonna, have, yep, there you go, palm up. Straight, perfect. So you're just gonna wrap this, you're gonna wrap the loop around the small piece. If you do it right, you're gonna try to hit it just right, you can make it look like a knot tied in the middle. Lower your hand for me, we can take this away. You see how it looks like a knot tied in the middle? It's a very yeah. convincing illusion. Here is the best way to make it look real, is you just pull slowly like this. Mm -hmm. Mind blown. Okay. Uh, perfect. You see, so that is a trick that all of you can do at home. Maybe. <laughs> at least you can purchase the rope. Yeah, she can I mean, you can at least do that. Right. Get, get right there. Oh, my <laughs> goodness, Brian. Thank you so much uh, for that yeah. mind blowing. Uh performance yeah, exactly. I just am, am mind blown right now well okay well second time on full us you second know time. how was the experience different from the first time what were the nerves the same or was it a little bit of the, the, the same it, feeling I really it's it's not a question of nerves because when you get out there on stage there's an audience and you know it's um, to be totally honest with you, it's just, it's like performing in front of a live audience. I mean, right. that's what I always do. So here I am performing in front of a live audience again. So there's not really a whole lot of nerves right. that I can say. But this time, it definitely was better because I kind of had an idea of what was going to happen. Right, the expectations. Uh, the expectations were there. Um, you so know. was there like a game plan going into it for a second time around, you know, because you've already been there, you already realized, you know, the, the audience factor, all of that stuff. Uh, was there a specific game plan that you're like, hey man, I gotta, did you feel you had to impress them even more or anything like that? The game plan is just to go on and do as good of a, as good of a performance as I possibly can, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm going to be on national TV, that's the important thing. I'm going to be on national TV. So whether or not you fool Penn and Teller, that's very much icing on the third cake. Yeah. So, no, I mean, um, I absolutely. I actually had a Penn and Teller cookbook growing up. My mom won some event, and I had a Penn and Teller cookbook. <laughs> Random <laughs> fact there. Uh, but but hey, you started uh, uh, your interest in magic when you were six years old. I was very young. And so to be on Penn and Teller's stage, that has to be a dream come true. Well, last night I was doing a, a corporate event. I was doing a, was a cocktail party. Uh, just w about one mile from where I saw my first magician. Wow. And just to be able to look over and see that spot and mm -hmm. just think, you know, I'm not sure I would be standing here right. if it wasn't for seeing that magician. Well, I, maybe I would actually be working for that company I was doing the show for last night. Right. So that would be the only way I'd be, <laughs> I would be there. But uh, yeah, started at six and, uh, you know, it's, it's just grown to this. And it's uh, That's I, I'm certainly That's uh, a very blessed human being to be able to do exactly what I love doing. Yeah, just blowing people's so. minds. Uh, so, okay, you know, uh, 
were, were Penn and Teller impressed? I know not not fooled because that, that might be a spoiler, right? But were they yes, impressed yes. with with what, what what you brought to the I, table this go around? I believe they were impressed. They they uh, even came back. Uh, this is a uh, this is not a spoiler, but as they do for a lot of the performers, they'll just come back and uh, and talk to you afterwards and just say, hey, that was great, whatever. And they were very very complimentary backstage. I love that. They're just they're great guys. As I say in my show, you know, I can't wait to see what happens. But granted, I taped it in August. So I already know what happens. So, right, right. Yeah, so you just have to just, just keeping the suspense. Keep it all inside. Yeah. Keep it all inside. <laughs> uh, anything else coming up that, that that we may be able to see you in? Uh, yeah, fool us tonight. That's that's fool the best. Tonight. That's there that's the go. most important thing. That's the one. That's the one I'll plug right now. All right, I love so. that. Well, hey, we always have. We always love having you. I, I know you did a a, a, a a trick or a, a with Rachel and Lauren uh, that's where true. they had or well, she had something on her hand. I don't. It was yeah, just yeah, poor Rachel. Yeah. I saw that. That was mind blowing too. <laughs> and she her her mind is still blown. Let me tell you that because that is definitely always a conversation we still have. So really appreciate your time, Brian. Oh, thank you so, so much, much man. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. For I still gotta go by. The rope now. Yes, That's what go. I got to do. Have it. All right. Hey, well, another rap war could be brewing, but not between the East Coast and the West Coast. Joe, uh, what's the talk truth and tea about this one? I'll tell you, but first let me tell you, Brian, I've been doing that same card trick I showed you <laughs> since I showed it to you. <laughs> Good trick. All right. This newest uh, rap war involves 50 Cent and Diddy, but a new film project could light the fuel to this fire. Closed caption.